Plus 4626 Comfort Zone by Beardfish. Their new album here in 2015, which came out in January. We're talking about it here in February because I'm really, really behind. Uh, but this is a band that I wanted to talk about. This is a great progressive rock slash progressive metal group, all depending on what song that you listen to, that definitely has uh, a lot of great moments that remind me of the classics from the 1970s. We're talking bands such as Yes or Genesis, and if you even go further on into the life cycle of progressive music, you can even hear a couple of hints of maybe some Marillion. But this is a group that's been active for about 13 to 14 years. They're from Sweden, and they have about seven albums underneath their belt. If you're looking for something to kind of pretext this for you, definitely check out the album Mammoth, especially for the massive song And the Stones Said If I Could Speak. Track two on the album, over 15 minutes, has multiple parts, everything that you would expect in a prog song, which reminds me, like I said, a lot of Genesis and Yes, because of songs such as Supper's Ready or Close to the Edge. So why do I mention this epic song, or all of these epics? It's principally because Beardfish is pretty darn good at doing these long, lengthy, epic tracks. This is certainly one of their strengths, something that they've really come to be kind of known for within the, the progressive rock community, even though they're a band that definitely needs a little bit more in the way of attention. They don't necessarily have the same pantheon of attention as a band such as Dream Theater or Opeth or even Pain of Salvation. They're kind of still on the outside looking in a little bit, especially here in America, and that's something that definitely needs to change. This album may be the one to actually do it. They're on Century Media Records, so it's certainly something that's possible. It's actually through a subsidiary of Inside Out Records, but who the hell is counting right now? But at the same token, this 10-track affair definitely showcases all the best elements of what Beardfish is able to accomplish, and we're going to touch base on a couple of those, but we're not necessarily going to dive into everything. Gotta save something for you fair listeners out there. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to talk about is If We Must Be Apart, A Love Story Continued, which is track 9, which is the epic on the album. I mention that specifically because it has the touchstones. It has the heralding signs of what Beardfish is all about. It's a love story continued which showcases a very, very uh, interesting narrative of a couple of individuals that are going through their lives. One person who is married to another individual but cannot seem to to always, or, or to uh, consistently and, you know, completely forget the memories of somebody from her past. Somebody who was perhaps a little bit more rough than usual. Somebody who kind of wants a reconciliation, wants a little bit of a bond, and uses a bit of black magic in order to kind of make some things happen. And the whole thing ends with a death. It's kind of a crazy track. It's one that I really can't describe just within, you know, the scope of a couple of seconds. It's one that you more so have to experience rather than just, you know, hear about. So definitely check out that song. Another thing is the fact that this band does have a very light side to them, especially on the lyrical sense. It's not something where every single track needs to be completely and totally super serious. Take the song Ode to the Rock and Roller, which I think is the only time in recorded history I've ever heard the word butthole used. It's in there, trust me. And this track just really has a great feel to it, and it definitely has a lot of meaning to it as well, considering where we're going here in 2015. Considering what we've heard over the course of the past, you know, 12 months from people such as Gene Simmons saying that rock and roll is dead. This is a song that definitely showcases and outlines all of the basic bare-bones principles of rock and roll, that the same three chords are the ones that need to be played because that's what the people want to hear. And the fact that the rock and roll idea has become a cliché. This is a great and very topical song, one that definitely has a, its eyes set very firmly toward the present and its ears very firmly listening to the tones of the day. So now that we get past the two, what I would consider, specialty tracks on the album, how's the rest of it hold up? I mean, we skipped right to eight, tracks 8 and 9. What about the other, you know, 8 that are on the album? What about tracks 1 through 7? How the hell is that all? Well, pretty darn solid. The one inside is a three-track portion of this album. These are kind of little basic little introductions or, or, or basic elements to a framework of a story that occurred that's not very long. It's about two minutes to four minutes in length for each of these, but definitely start to showcase some of Beardfish's strengths and storytelling and songwriting. A song such as Hold On or Comfort Zone to early uh, to uh, hamper early on the album definitely gives it a very nice boost right from the get-go. Certainly showcasing Beardfish's 
cumulative abilities through swirling keys, fantastic guitar work, and lyricism and vocals that just are second to none. These are vocals that can easily kind of undulate between a very simple to subtle, almost spoken word style, all the way up to a very, very mid-ranged, higher uh, vocal prowess, uh, very progressive in nature in the fact that it's very solid, very steady. It's not one that feels the need to uh, be overly excessively perfect, but at the same time, it's not rough and rugged. This is very clean. So these tracks are able to do great things in the way of which get it gets the album off on the right foot. It keeps things going very solidly and also showcases that within any song, it can change very, very quickly, and Beardfish is not afraid to use that to their advantage. Unlike Brothers of the Sonic Cloth, which we just talked about, this is a band that's going to use a lot of change, use a lot of musical density and diversity in order to fully, fully experience every song, uh, in order for an individual to fully experience it, that is. Then we get the songs such as Can You See Me Now and King, which continue on everything that the album's kind of pushing toward. However, Comfort Zone and Hold On just feel like two really, really hard-to-top opening tracks. These two really set the pace really solidly, and it feels like these two tracks do their best to try to keep up, to kind of tag along, but end up just sort of being like a cat that follows you home. It's not you, it's not what you're doing, it's just a cat that's following you home. It's doing its best, but it's not a human, so it can't be you. So these are tracks that feel like they certainly do their job and tremendously, tremendously accent out the, uh, the album at its position, but just don't do it quite as well as the opening two numbers on this track. And then we get to songs such as Daughter Slush Slash Whore, and then we've already spoken to Ode to the Rock and Roller and If We Must Be Apart. The latter portion of this album is exceptionally strong. This is where a lot of the meat and potatoes come in. This is where we have the 15 minute long epic. And this is where the album really starts to compete with that early album glory that songs such as Hold On and Comfort Zone really, really achieve. But I think it defeats it. I think it actually goes one step further. Not just because Beardfish is that good at doing epic, epic songs, but based around the fact that this is the full Monty, as I mentioned. This is the cumulative experience. This is Beardfish doing everything that they do so very well in one track. Fantastic vocalization, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous musicality, fantastic keyboard work. If there's one thing I praise on this album above all else, it's the keyboard work. It's pristine, wonderful, wonderful swirling layers of keys that you can hear from track to track, but you hear it even more prominently in the 15 minute long epic. All in all, what does this mean for this album? What does this mean for this band? What does it mean for you, casual progressive listener or casual music fan, metal fan? Well, let me dial it in for you. Progressive music is one that you're going to have to explore. It doesn't matter what kind of metal fan that you are, you got to explore it at one point. Simply because this is what formulates the opinion uh, that metal fans are in a subgenre of music that is just completely unlike anything else. This is a music style that really is very anti-conventional, and it's one that certainly, within this day and age, is the anti-nickelback, so to speak. You listen to a band such as Beardfish, and you're instantly listening to what many people would call thinking man's music, which is what... Many people allude that progressive music is in general. So you check out something like this and you immediately recognize just how right they are. This is fantastic, uh, fantastic musicianship that's overlaid by great vocals and fantastic atmosphere. Storytelling that certainly makes you feel very alive within it. So they do all the three touchstones of principal musical storytelling exceptionally well. The band itself is certainly geared for a little bit of a takeover. Beardfish reminds me a lot of, oh, uh, there's a group that I, it was just on the tip of my tongue, Big Elf, that last year I think really scored a huge, huge, huge album, and I feel like this year Beardfish has that album as well, even though they've had such great albums in the past. For you, you should check this out simply because it could lead to a whole, whole new world of musical evolution. This is certainly something that could cause you to even dive further back into music history. This is something where you may not necessarily desire to become a prog rock nerd, a la Stephen Wilson, Mike Ackerfeet, or Cover Killer Nation. But at the same time, you may at least pique 
some more curiosity. And you'll also recognize that these Swedes have a shitload of talent, and they are definitely not afraid to show it. Great album, terrific, terrific balance. Love what these guys have done. 89 out of 100. Definitely a solid release, one that I highly recommend. What did you guys think of it? Those of you who are watching this, who have listened to this for a month now, you're ahead of the game, ahead of CKN, the hell, man. What did you guys think of it? Mittens liked it, but he's not here right now, so, yeah. Let me know. Still recording. Hello. Hello. Sting. Hello.